For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Questions for Carl, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Yeah. The uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actor's Studio. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh no, what I'm, do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates. I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> If he owns a place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. OK, well, let's say it's St Peter. No, Peter. no, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through to God, go through a few doors, go up top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, OK, that overlooks the universe. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like... God to say to you at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well in that in your life. You never did anybody any harm. So, welcome to the to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like, a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So hang on, he's giving you a little map. So he's giving you a little map of the a area. It's big. He'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... A bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to! No, but oh, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. Do you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um... Uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that is just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? Sud Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. What about teenagers? And um, do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't around. So but you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. And it's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest starting about 1984. <laughs> right. Quite a specific year. Why? Why was, just, was that? Just I was free and happy. How old, I mean? how old were you? I don't know. Uh, He's just counting on his fingers now. 12. Right, OK. And it was just good. So uh, the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. <laughs> so you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or... Just riding in a circle endlessly through you, blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in. I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was like... Like you and McGregor. A, a memory's always sort of like coming in for some orange, 
and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in my house. <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But That's what I mean, being free. you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you have. Your hair, your <laughs> hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk stupid, ma'am. It was, it was easy. So, yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see... To and it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. It's your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> On his 13th birthday. <laughs> well, you were buying a cake. What, what did you what see did you at the supermarket? Just, that... It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> My eyes moved without more than I did. <laughs> oh, dear, couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. a workout, a baby workout. Oh, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was... <laughs> I love that he could reason with her. I love him. He's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know. She goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no-one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer, because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just going, walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no I, was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony, yeah. he did tiling with him. He drove past and he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, four, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> but he's only having a... He's down the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? <laughs> uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we're all bringing ours. All right, see you later, mate. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out <laughs> in the back car and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van. They're just going, yeah. oh, well. They drove down the pub. <laughs> Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> This is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then... Uh, the for, for a bit? Just had a game of pool? Then my dad came in. It was like, oh, there you are. Mm. Oh, there you are! I love that! Oh, where's my baby? Going to, I'm just going to have a quick pint now. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. Well, it's that time again. It's Carl's diary. Oh, what's he written today? I told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so he, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind-reading and stuff. So right. you get a... A recording, a recording of the... Of uh, yep. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. 
and a dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was, were they looking... I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you no, think? No, they were just, just looking at me, and I was sort of panicking a bit, and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on the beach. <laughs> He was no, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh, no, I'm getting it all tangled up. I've got a cross line here. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well... Oh. He had, his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk... How would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk... So you're basically walking forwards? I reckon or, I'd walk sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that. That was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, cockroach I mean, men, spider men. What are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff? Powers g- going about. It's all these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or, or whatever that's No, you, you said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's, the, where's the... You've left a big bit out, but when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke wearing a, a jacket... It's just that we always use insects for, like, a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Woke up at 9.55am. As soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God! I was thinking that! Springing into action, he zips up his eyes are like... <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up, Carl. Put the kettle on. Oh, God! Oh, fucking hell! Carl, let's give him a list. Top five something. What, what are you interested in? Are you interested in new sport... TV, cars, movies, style. I mean, I'm, in, I'm into weird stuff, but it seems a bit tight to stick them in a list. What, like what? Well, like, fr- you know, sort of freaky people and that. I've got that, <laughs> I've got that freak book. But I don't know if they'd be happy if I called one of them and said, good news, you're at number one, because you've got four legs or whatever. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> OK, then, this is the Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks in a number five. Um. Probably uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? What's Lighthouse Man? What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fellow with a hole in his head. <laughs> and he, uh, what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? Sticks a candle in it. What are you it. talking about? Where is the I hole? I bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Man, did he? Well, I don't know. It's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknamed. Because he had this hole. Doctors were like, there's nothing we can do. Can't fill it. Thought, what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric in that. You had to walk about with a candle. <laughs> right. Just thought, hang on a minute. Okay, I can have both got hands. Got a little for candle you. holder here. Yeah. Stuck a candle in it. And he just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. So again, not. I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Um, so was it in his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want it in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back with your neck crick. So he was like a kind of human jack o' lantern. He's yeah. a lighthouse man. What, Steve, what, Sorry, what, what yeah, better I description do you need that. than the lighthouse man? So, yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. Number four. What about 
pig faced woman of Manchester Square. <laughs> God, again, you're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Right. And it's just this woman who had a face like a pig. <laughs> and uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. <laughs> Someone said it was a pet bear and they'd shaved it. <laughs> That's what oh, I, God! That's what was, this someone, was this someone you saw? Or no, did you no, just this, read is, about? this is going back. This is years this is, ago. This is years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig-faced woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that um, it was a woman, and the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their disfigurement, deformity, um... A little bit like being called freaks, do you think? Well, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, it was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's, he's number three. He's, the, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, sure, he's sort uh, of entry-level freak. Yeah. Uh, a gateway freak. Everyone, everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, a couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? How would I react? Well, I've, I've sort of seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. Mm -hmm. So I don't even think I'd flinch. OK. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that, <laughs> that was, that was a, a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you. I don't double take mm. or anything. Uh, what would I say to him, though? What, what, uh... I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> <laughs> he always had hat on. Where do you get that from? <laughs> oh, that sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah. yeah that one, didn't he? So, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh, Elephant Man, number three. I can't wait one, for two and yeah. one. Right, OK, number well, two. Well, I know what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about... Well, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had, like, a normal body. Looking at him, you'd go, what's up with him? He's not a freak. Takes his undies off. He's got two knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK. I mean, there's nowhere to start. Do I you think he, he uses them alternately? Like, I have a wee out of this one, I have a wee out of that one. Or does he just, like, spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What do you mean he's sort of like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, yeah. he, sort of, he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So he do you reckon he holds them both them out? Definitely. So he takes his trousers down, cos, I mean, you know... He, yeah, he can't use a Y front. Right. Be, uh... Need more like a W front. Yeah. So um, he, he pops his pecs down there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like... Uh... Well! <laughs> I don't know. I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if you had Elephant Man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant, but that's the only thing that wasn't of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way round. Everything normal, took the pants off. Oh, well, what's going on here? <laughs> But why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if... But why, I, don't know, I don't know why you'd be in a situation with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a, in a cubicle yeah. and he's there. For what? So you're I'm waiting, waiting, in the to, have, I'm waiting to have a, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up and going, right. hang on, you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually, oh, and have then a look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. See, I, I didn't see him at two urinals. I saw him at one, maybe with them pointing inwards. If you had that and you, and the, say, the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you? Well, let's see, exact, tell me exactly what you would say. Uh, you had normal head then, didn't you? I had, I had the same head, yeah. Yeah, but it had, like, hair in, coming out of it, didn't it? And yeah, like... yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then <laughs> as well, so I think we've both been dumb. Anyway, we need to get to number one. Yeah, number one. OK, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Pillow Man. OK, now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with uh, no arms and legs, mm -hmm. just a head. And a little body, nickname Pillar Man. Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way he, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig, just using his like his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a... lit. He'd buy like roll your own. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah. 
and he he, he had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, did he do you think he, he used to do it? He used to get it in his mouth, and I don't know. Jesus, it's amazing. Did he have? Did he have a knob? I think he did because he had some kids. What? He, yeah, he had kids. He was an all right looking fella. He wasn't. He wasn't odd looking. He's just sorry. No, he looked like Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine him with no arms and legs. Right, that's odd, though, isn't it? Really? Um, it's weird, but you've got to give it to him. You know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own. He's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people, it's not, you say it looks cool to, you know, with no arms and no legs to smoke, but don't forget that smoking can stunt your growth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember, he was on, like, this, this circus freak show thing with, yeah. like, a bearded woman. Yeah. Right? Um... She isn't really a freak, is it? She's going to have a shave. Have a shave, you're not a freak anymore. Yeah. A bearded woman. Compared to a fellow who's got no arms and legs, a bearded woman, you're going to get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was, there was like a fellow with, with uh, no bottom half to his body uh, called Johnny Eck, was his name. Uh, so, you know, when you're knocking about with that crowd... <laughs> you're going to get, get a bit. Out. <laughs> you're going to get a bit. So, yeah, he had kids and they were all normal kids. They had all the legs. Did his so wife had arms and legs? Never saw his wife. Never saw his wife. I think he's... He was probably ashamed of her. She was a bit of a freak. For someone like him, you'd think he'd just give up, wouldn't you? You'd think, forget it. What sort of life is it? Yeah. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> it's not worth it. living. But he just got on with it. He, I mean, to have a shave, I, I don't even bother having a shave sometimes. No, no. Nor did the bearded lady. Lazy fucking bitch. So that's why I've put him at my number one position. Uh, it's just amazing, isn't it, the human? You know, how, how, you know, whatever you dealt, some people just get on with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the pillow man. Or draft excluder, as I prefer to call him. <laughs> there you go! Oh. Now, me and Steve are a couple of big shots. We do this for a laugh, but this is Carl Pilkerton's only source of income. This is what you do now, isn't it? This is me full-time job, yeah. What do you think of that? Is this the, me. Why? This isn't what I ever wanted. Because <laughs> I haven't got a purpose, have I? I'm sat here talking about the pillow, man. If it weren't for him, I'd have nothing to say. It just depresses me that I just wish I had a job where I felt like I was needed. <laughs> and I don't feel needed. It's not a proper job. We need you. We no, need you. We but, need you for but, money for old route. Yeah. I know, but this isn't... I, I, I wanted something that, you know, when you, get, when you die and that, it's, you know, you get up to the gates, whatever, and they say, what have you done? And then I'm looking worried, thinking, is the pillar man about? 